Hi, this is Mr. McConley, and this is BKW Intro to Agriculture class. Today we're going to talk about silage. Now, you can see silage in a variety of different ways, so it's confusing to some people. At some farms, you might see that they take a forage, something that they cut out of the field, and they pile it in a large mound that almost looks, usually with concrete walls around it, they pile it in a large mound and then they eventually cover it with plastic and put tires on the top. That's one way you might see it. You might see it in a long tubular white looking snake. And inside of that, there's round bales that have been wrapped up all connected end to end to end. You might see it individually wrapped like we do here, where we wrap each bale individually, which works for us because of the rate that we use the bales at, it's just more convenient. It works better to wrap them one at a time and use them one at a time. Um, how else could we see them? You can see a tube. You yes, said the tube. tube. So how about an ag bag? You can see an ag bag, which is like a large plastic bag that you put um, forages inside. And again, you know, it's, it could be corn or. Yep. So or you can corn. silage or ensile. A lot of different things. Basically what it means is you take a product out of the field such as corn um, or, or a grass, an alfalfa, you cut it, you chop it, and before it dries you collect it up and you have to store it. Now, now back up a second. Most people when you think of doing hay you, you think that you want the, the, to cut the hay and then let it dry down so it's at a safe moisture level and then bale it up and then then it can be stored because it's dry and it won't heat up or burn or get mold and then you can use it months later in the winter time to feed your animals which that's the, the the old traditional thinking and we still do a lot of that but this new in silaging or silage is a little bit different process so what happens is you cut it it's wet and you you bale it up or you pile it up and then you wrap it in the plastic. Now the process of respiration will start soon. So within a short amount of time, respiration starts. And what respiration really is, is it's the carbohydrates being turned into energy. And during that process of carbohydrate, carbohydrates being turned into energy, you get a lot of heat and you start getting mold also. So a lot of times, the day after we wrap them, or even a few hours later, you'll see this plastic starts to uh, bulge up. Good point, because what's happening, warm. even though it is wrapped, like Farmer Andrew is saying, it'll start to heat up, and that heat will start expanding. So this plastic that's on the outside, you'll actually see it bulge out. The, the marshmallow will be like swelling up for a little while. But it's limited in that, um, Respiration needs oxygen to continue to happen. Once the oxygen has been starved because the plastic is not allowing any new oxygen to get in here, now this, this bale is starved for oxygen, it's anaerobic, it can't continue to respirate, and now we switch over to a process called fermentation. So the bacteria that are in there eating away at the, at the, car, at the carbohydrates, they're eating away and they're they're giving off or excreting lactic acid. Now this lactic acid starts building up inside this bale. Remember, there's no more oxygen. Now we're without, we're um, anaerobic, we're without oxygen. And the, the bacteria that are in here are giving off the lactic acid, which in turn makes it so the mold, it's in, inhospitable for the mold. The mold can't grow because it's too acidic for them, basically. And now you're not gonna get any mold and at the same time, since you're not getting any of those molds, all of a sudden the heat will start to drop. It'll start cooling back off. Now, this process continues for quite a while, 30 days or so. And during that 30 days, eventually the bacteria that are inside this wrapped silage bale will give off so much lactic acid that they'll actually poison themselves. And those bacteria aren't, will get to a point where they are no longer even able to live in this environment and they kill themselves off and now you're left with a bale that is still moist still has excellent nutritional value because it's basically like fresh cut grass 
although the acidic, the pH has been lowered, it's very acidic now, and it's very stable. And now it, in this condition, still wrapped, it can remain for a year or more and still be good forage, good feed for the animals, good fodder is another word. Now what can go wrong? Well, a lot of things can go wrong if it's, if it's too wet, if it's too dry, either way the process won't correctly work, it's out of balance and you won't get a bale that's ensiled and can be stored for long periods of time. The other thing that's happened, and we've done this, by mistake you might bump into a bale, rip a hole in the bale, and when that happens then the oxygen can get back in and then you go towards respiration again and you get a rotten stinky bale that no animal wants to eat. So I'm going to cut one of these bales here open so we can take a look inside because we're going to use this one in a minute anyway. So I'm just going to take a look inside like this real quick and oh great smelling and you can see this looks just as nice as the day it was cut. It's, it's wet, it's moist still. It's got a great smell because that, that acid has changed it a little bit. And the smell now is a, is a sweet, um, really great smelling that the animals just love and they'll just gobble it up. So, my name is Mr. McConley and this is Intro to Ag, BKW Intro to Ag class. And we've been talking about ensiling or silage bales today.